Can you go from rags to riches with just a needle and thread? I'm Emily Sadal. I'm 22 years old and I'm the owner of Brown Eyed Quilter. Emily uses her sewing skills and her long arm quilting machine to finish quilts for customers around the country. This is insane. You went from this little machine to this gargantuan beast of a piece of equipment. She works from her own studio on her family property and has some pretty unusual co-workers. In this episode of The Hustle, we'll go behind the scenes to see how Emily switched from a tabletop sewing machine to a 12-foot long-arm quilting machine to expand her business. We'll also learn how this major piece of equipment paid for itself over time, all while being an essential element to Emily's business. Emily's knack for quilting comes from her family. After getting some practice on her grandmother's sewing machine, Emily got one of her own as a Christmas gift. Then one day, Emily received an email that changed everything. In March 2020, I got an email from Etsy, and they said, if you can make and sell fabric face masks, they will sell, and you'll make money on it. And I was like, if they think it's big enough to send out an email, maybe I should try it. So I made one real fast and put it on, and sold within the first 30 minutes wow. of being up. So then I was like, okay, let's put up another one. And they just kept selling and selling. And it turned out I made 3,500 in the first like six to eight weeks. In order to move from masks to quilts, Emily needed bigger machinery. She couldn't do the volume of business she wanted sewing by hand on her small sewing machine. This meant resourcing a bigger, better piece of equipment. Resourcing means acquiring and managing assets that can grow a business. To stand out in the crowded quilting market, Emily needed a long arm quilting machine. A long arm quilting machine is a sewing machine on steroids. Unfortunately for Emily, getting access to one was like finding a needle in a haystack. The closest dealer and place that you could rent out this machine was actually like an hour, an hour and a half from where I lived. And there wasn't a ton of like other long arm quilters in the Los Angeles area. Emily decided to take a risk on a huge investment. She went all in and put down $20,000 on a machine of her own. So what was it like laying down 20 grand? It was a little bit scary, but I had enough money from making masks to buy second, like, best machine that the company had. And then my parents helped me by helping upgrade to the highest grade machine so that then I could be a dealer and rep for the company. If I bought the machine and then didn't enjoy it or business didn't go well, I could sell the machine and pretty much have the same amount of money I had before. Well, I love hearing about the business, but I want to give it a try myself. You think you can show me how it's done? Let's go do it. Here it is. Wow. So this is the Brown Eye Quilter HQ. Yes. All right, so you think you can show me what's going on here, show me how to quilt today? Yeah. Emily's machine is a huge part of her business. It's built for larger, more intricate projects than most sewing machines. Magnets and heavy rollers keep the fabric steady and give her a smooth surface for stitching. Now we're going to roll it up on this bar. So when I start the machine, it's um, stitch regulated. So however fast I go is how fast the machine will stitch. So now we're gonna go to the back of the machine and start stitching. All right, let's do it. This is really cool. The, the red dot over on this side stitches exactly what I'm doing here on the quilt top on that side of the machine. It's incredible. That was intense. I'm sweating right now. That was awesome. <laughs> It's like a video game, it feels like. One row down and probably 10, 15 more to go. Oh my gosh. Okay, not bad, right? It looks good. I'm very proud of myself. Oh my, I'm blown away. Emily's skills are a rare find, and her machine is a valuable investment. It's what the business world calls a capital expenditure, or CapEx, a fixed, long-term asset that pays its owner back in value. Investing in CapEx could mean buying real estate, intellectual property, or, in Emily's case, heavy machinery. I've probably worked on hundreds of people's quilts. Lots of my clients are actually from all over the U.S., but I have noticed a lot of other long-arm quilters have a very long wait time, like two to three months, even longer, and right now my turnaround time is in one to two week range. A lot of people do want them faster, and I have had people switch over from other long-armers just because it was taking so long. It's never cheap, and with a high upfront cost, there's always risk. Unlike operational expenditures, or OPEX, that's things like rent, wages, or materials you spend money on every day, CapEx brings long-term advantages and risks of its own. 
I brought out my original machine that I started with. This is the machine that I made most of the masks on, as well as my first twin size quilt. You did a quilt on that. I did a quilt on this. There's not that much space, so you roll it up. You have to try and get it to go all the way through. Hey, let me pick this up. Stitches. This is incredible. Look at this. When we talk about resourcing, this is exactly what we think of. Finding new equipment, finding ways to scale your business up, and I can't think of a better glaring example <laughs> than this to this. Buying a machine you can rent out or sell means maintaining it, adding accessories, and covering those expenses with profit. If you aren't pricing your services in a way that covers expenses, you might not recoup that upfront cost. The alarm quilting <laughs> machine is basically my only piece of equipment for my business. My machine and my creativity. So far, Emily's investment is paying off. To work quickly and handle more volume, Emily kept resourcing. She invested another $10,000 and fitted her machine with a computer system. She can always guide it by hand, but with that system, her machine sews patterns all by itself. Hey, I've set up the computerized system. All you have to do is click sew. All right, here we go. This is gonna be some of my best sewing work yet. Not done by me. But you can see it tells me the number of stitches and what percentage it is complete. Got it. This is really cool. It's showing it in real time, yeah. what it has done already. This whole row is over 15,000 stitches. How many did you do freehand before you got the computer system? I did about 200 freehand. That's totally hands-on. I was here every single second for every single stitch before I added the computerized system. That's a lot of quilts. That's a lot of hours. How many does it take you to do one? Um, I would say probably three to five hours for each one. So doing the math there, that's what, anywhere between 600 and 1,000 hours of manual labor quilting these together. Yeah. Turning assets into revenue streams is a sound business strategy and a great way to ensure return on investment, or ROI. Return on investment is the money you make compared to the money you first put in. The more money you make, the higher your ROI will be. Whether she's trimming, padding, or sewing cool patterns into a family heirloom, Emily's work is, well, seamless. And with her long arm quilting machine, Emily is sewing up success. She's even going to offer new products and classes to train people on her machine. And if you're looking for a comfy quilt, this brown eyed quilter has you covered, one stitch at a time. Just start small. It doesn't have to be a big machine like this. You know, there's lots of people who do you know, other sewing related things or any kind of business. Have big plans, but also, you know, work on what's in front of you and build up to that. So what did we learn from Emily today? Growing a business usually takes resourcing, acquiring and managing assets that help you operate. Capital expenditures like Emily's quilting machine are a one of a kind resource, an expensive kind, but they pay off in long-term value. Making wise investments and turning them into new forms of revenue is a good strategy for your ROI, return on investment. As the Brown Eyed Quilter shows us, passion, persistence, and the right resourcing can help you make the cut. Get in that, get in that, Charles. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're on camera, man. All right. <laughs> All five pounds of that. All right, 15, come on. 15. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching The Hustle. To make sure you don't miss out on any more videos like this, please subscribe at PragerU.com today. And if you want to learn more about business, visit PragerUKids.com to download worksheets, lesson plans, and more.